The country continues to grapple with environmental problems emanating from global warming. As witnessed in perennial floods, desertification and coastal erosion worsened by haphazardly planned city structures, surveyors have more jobs to be done. Today on Panorama, we will identify the likely environmental problems and futuristic solutions. This will be the focus of this course from Panorama from Port Harcourt Network Center. I'm Jenny Fassi. Thanks for joining us. You can watch this live broadcast on the social media handle being displayed on your screen. Armed conflicts, famine, and political unrest have just a few reasons many flee to seek safety. In their quest for survival, this group of persons are left with bitter tales. This report examines the plight of internally displaced persons in Nigeria, and I tell you, their stories are better imagined. Two, disasters and human rights violation are just a few reasons many leave their states or countries to become internally displaced persons refugees, asylum seekers, or migrants. Displaced persons, displacement experts say, suffer high risk of physical attack, sexual assault, abduction, and oftentimes death. Ladimosa is an indigent of Guazo in Meidubri. She shares her experience. I lost one of my sister on our way to Cameroon because it was in the night. Now, um, uh, a big snake bites her on her leg. Yeah, I cannot afford my children's education. You know, this, as I said, this is a seventh displacement. I am no longer, no matter how strong I was, you know, I have exhausted this, what all I have. Data by Internal Displacement Monitoring Center reveal that conflict and violence triggered 11.6 million internal displacements in sub-Saharan Africa in 2001. Multiple reports show that in Nigeria, Boko Haram and other non-state armed groups, as well as clashes between herders and farmers, have pushed some 3.0 million Nigerians as of November 2021 out of their homes, especially in parts of northeast Nigeria. The African Union Convention for the Protection and Assistance of IDPs in Africa which came into force in 2012, is the first continental instrument that legally binds governments to protect the rights and well-being of people first to flee their homes. The Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, National Commission for Refugees, Migrants and Internally Displaced Persons, alongside donor agencies, have been championing the cause of IDPs in Nigeria through several interventions. Convention of Kampala Convention by African nations remain key to addressing internal displacement. Elizabeth Omori reported that this was the position of the chief of staff to the president, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, who represented President Muhammad Buhari at a ceremony in commemoration of the National Day for Internally Displaced Persons. I don't know what is going on. 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 I don't know what is after all we left there before, I now notice that my mother is in Abuja. A cautious encounter with insurgents in Meiduguri is not fictional. Now, there is a new direction for him and other IDPs. <laughs> Celebrating their resilience birthed the National Day for Internally Displaced Persons and key players on displacement management are advocating funding of integrated durable solutions to aid their plight. 
federal government will continue to collaborate with the United Nations, with the state governments and other partners to set up this initiative to other affected communities and especially to promote the return of IDPs to their respective communities in safety and with dignity. Nigeria, with 3.2 million internally displaced persons, has been equipping these survivors with life-changing skills to promote economic prosperity. Currently, various ministries, partners, and agencies of the government have made provision for services such as education, health, wash, identification in the interest of refugees, IDPs, and attorneys, promotion of self-reliance, for the refugees and such other persons of concern is one of my ministry's key objectives as we strive to take them out of the humanitarian hands out zone to sustainably becoming self-reliant members of the society. The Commission is therefore committed to facilitating access to social services and many the host community camps and settlements in collaboration with all relevant stakeholders by increasing frameworks that boost their level of availability and accessibility. With a three years action plan in the northeast and shutting of IDP camps in Borno, it is expected that more camps will be closed to facilitate resettlement. The ceremony featured an exhibition fashion show, award presentations, and musical performances in Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. The state petroleum resources, Timothy Silva, has empathized with the people and residents of Bayelsa State over the level of damage caused by the flood. The minister expressed his sympathy during the visit to internally displaced person camps where relief materials and food items donated by the Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board were presented. Moved by the level of devastation occasioned by the flood waters and the attendant effects on the people and environment, the Minister for State Petroleum Resources, accompanied by the Executive Secretary, Simbi. KCA Wabote has visited the damaged sections of the River State houses of the East West Road. The minister who expressed shock over the level of damage emphasized federal government's commitment to commence rehabilitation work. What I went around to see was devastation. It was very sad. We went to the East West Road. We saw the extent of damage on that road. We also went to the Amashoma Road. We saw the extent of damage to that road. We also overflew some of the communities and we saw that some houses are underwater. The devastation is total. At the internally displaced person camps, the minister encouraged the people not to despair in these trying times and that the relief materials and food items donated by the NCDMB is to ameliorate their pain. Of course, we have to identify with you today. I have come with NCDMB. I have asked them to come with some palliatives. Representatives of the various camps, Ebiwo Koku Obiai and Maria Olodu Osima, commended the NCDMB for the kind gesture. In Yenagua, Ebiwo Zintemiola, NTNs. And falls for from commercial, the panorama continues shortly. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders, to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only.
back and now to the rest of the news. Third victim in Rebel State who are living in internally displaced persons camp are witnessing a traumatic time due to inadequate food and lack of medical care in the camp. Jenkuno Lula in this report takes a look at the challenges of the flood victims in the camps. The flood may be receding, but there are many issues that still need urgent attention, such as food supply, adequate clothing, and shelter for the displaced. A visit to Edoha and Ogiabede IDP camps in Aruba East local government area of River State shows poor coordination of care for the internally displaced persons. Many of the flood victims were seen sleeping on the floor due to lack of mattresses. Despite the intervention of government through the provision of food aid, shortage or absence of basic medical facilities represent the major problems confronting the internally displaced persons. As at now, government has not provided anything like food to us. And this camp covered 21 communities and towns in Lopata with many indigenous of our uh, 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 West Estrat uh, 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 who are involved in this camp. We are sleeping on the ground. No, that no foam except that very foam brought by uh, Her Majesty. Mosquito they bite us. No net, nothing, nothing, and no beds. We they live with uh, just like that. So no, the government they bring food, but the food no rich. As some of the camps visited, the internally displaced persons noted the effort being made by the community leaders to cushion the effects of the flood. In fact, they will serve ten or fifteen people. They say medicine finish. The honest bought the other's net. All the, the rooms here, the man has tried the rough. We lost two people in the camps. Those lives would have been saved if we have a good uh, medications. In addition to what the government uh, brought to us, we have been able to mobilize our sons and daughters at home and in diaspora. And they've been responding positively by bringing in materials and cash and uh, which the committee set up by the Pata Kingdom is using to feed the people. As the flood recedes, some of the internally displaced persons we are seen leaving the camp to their houses. Government has expressed commitments to helping these displaced persons. It is hoped the actions will be commensurate with what is required immediately to sustain the health and well-being of the people. From Edoha camp, in Aouda East local government area of River State, Yanukme Ulolo, NTA News. Meanwhile, Governor Ben Ayade is soliciting the assistance of the federal government and international communities to sustain food supply and other essential needs to refugees in the state and other parts of Nigeria. The Governor of the Peace, when the United Nations Refugee Agency donated vehicles, utility car, and vaccine careers. To the question of the government in Calabar for Evil reports. There are over 85,000 Cameroonian refugees scattered across various camps in four states in Nigeria and over 50,000 in eight local government areas of Cross River State. In appreciation of Cross River State efforts, and contribution to refugees, the UN agency is making this donation and the state governor is not relenting to sustain the support. We want to thank you that you appreciate the fact that we took a great leap of faith to provide land for you to host, I could say today, over 50,000, by statistics puts it at 62,000 people in Cross River State. I want to quickly mention that we will need your support particularly in the food supply chain for those young people. Efficiency is critical. Cross River State Government has invested heavily on the food chain. And so if you look at our beneficiation program on our average agri value chain, we have noodles, we have chicken. It is a token uh, to express our appreciation and the gratitude for great support UNHCR has been getting from uh, Cross River uh, State Development. The Primary Healthcare Development Agency is one of the beneficiaries of the donation. This will further complement um, His Excellency's letter, Professor Ben Ayade's resolve, and ensuring that despite where or wherever you are as a Koshivarian, you can always have access to quality healthcare.
Ogoja local government area of Cross River State hosts the highest number of refugees in the country. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NTA News. Accurate data has been described as an important tool in national planning for development. This was the position of stakeholders at a workshop organized by the KB State Office of National Population Commission in Bernie Kebi. The reports. One fact that emerged at the gathering was the need for synergy between the local communities and the commission, considered one of the important keys in actualizing a credible, accurate, and reliable data for national planning. By this locality list, we are going to bring them out for each local government to go and check the names if some of the other ones cover so they, they can complain. So that we will come back and check it and take it to the headquarters to meet set goals stakeholders were drawn from all parts of kebi with the aim of conducting a smooth census exercise come 2023 population source journal gave us a lot of information for national development because population data give us room to know the working age population in the country it also give us room to know the number of people that require some certain kind of information or that require a special needs in the, in, in the, in the country. Sensitization is the most important issue here. We are going to have to use our local leaders, the traditional rulers, to ensure that they sensitize the people around so that they know what they are supposed to be doing when it comes to counting. Stakeholders at the event were optimistic that with accurate data, there will be national development for the benefit of all. It is expected that knowledge acquired at the workshop is stepped down to people in the communities across the state. Governor Wike announced the increase during the inauguration of the second batch of the initial 100,000 special assistance on political unit affairs from River East senatorial districts. Okay, reports. Governor Wike said his administration has carried out a array of projects that have impacted positively on the socio-economic life of the people. He said the appointment is part of the human empowerment program he promised the people, saying the appointees will help his administration to finish strong. <laughs> Governor admonished the appointees to work with their people in their respective political units. He said they will also be saddled with the responsibility of ascertaining the impressions of the people concerning the policies and programs of the government, collate those feelings and pass them on as feedbacks through the world and constituency liaison offices. Who will transmit same to his office? In Port Harcourt, NTN. As the country approaches another electioneering year, one of the means of advancing the frontiers of development and ensuring good governance for the Nigerian masses is by placing premium of what constitutes national interest above personal interest. Judith Eronia examines how politics of personal interest is fast destabilizing the governance structure of most developing countries. The preference for democracy over other forms of government is because of its capacity to deliver good governance to the generality of the people and its emphasis on national good before personal or group interest. On the contrary, politics, especially in this climate, is largely influenced and propelled by personal or selfish interests and other primordial values by some political actors. What do you find with leaders today? That they seem to be more interested in sorting themselves out, sorting their families out, and making sure that in the day of this, they and their families will never be in any lack or take care. The followers, on the other hand, are supposed to ensure that the leaders are going in the direction they promised. 
analysts say corruption, insecurity, economic instability, unemployment, and poverty are endemic in a country whose national interest has been jeopardized. At the heart of good governance is good leadership, which will presuppose that you are in touch with the people, you know their expectations, and that's why politicians go to the people and campaign. That's why they have manifestos. And then um, you will expect now that when they get into power, they will be true to themselves, they will be realistic, they will totally commit to ensuring that um, life gets better for the people. The urgent need to redefine Nigeria's national interest and pursuance of its objectives therefore becomes imperative for meaningful growth and development to thrive. Yes, we've seen some of our leaders that have um, been very sacrificial and they've, they've chosen not to have big cars and then the big houses, but it is just one out of a hundred and it's not so pleasing. We are hopeful that um, our leaders will know that they are there to serve us. As the 2023 general election draws closer, Porter Court, Chidia Bere Onya, MCA News. As the 2023 electioneering process progresses, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, is equipping personnel with knowledge required to meet the demands and expectations of the electorate before, during, and after the elections. This was at a capacity building workshop for state and local government voter education desk offices held in Calabar. Justin Item reports. The Independent National Electoral Commission has been midwifing elections in the country since 1999, and in all the exercise, lessons are recorded, reflected upon, and evaluated for improvement in subsequent elections. This session is one of such stock-taking and projections towards effective voter education to fast-track the needed credible exercise come 2023. Those who are engaged in um, voter education, especially at the local government level and at the state level, we need to get them out breasts of new developments and new innovations in the commission uh, so that when they go out to go and converse, when they go out to go and educate people, they will educate them based on knowledge and also based on the new electoral legal framework. Participants who are treated to enlightenment talks by resource persons say they are better equipped to enlighten the public about the electioneering processes. It will it only help us to bring the message down to the grassroots, to the voters, giving them up-to-date information concerning the Commission's policy towards this 2023 general election. When we go back to our ILG, we will now continue with the attorney to educate the electorate about the processes of um, this coming election. For us to have a good information on how to speak to the local people in the languages that they can understand. That is why we're here. In the next few weeks, INEC will be displaying voter register for claims, objections, and collection of permanent voter cards, as well as other critical programs scheduled for implementation before the elections proper. In Calabar, Justina Etam. NTA News. Let's now join Olumide Ogunsola for sports update. About 25,000 women from